Defense Updates has reached more than 150,000 subscribers. We're genuinely thankful to our viewers. You keep us going. We don't dilute your video watching experience in this channel with sponsored products. If you like what we're doing, kindly support us on Patreon. www.patreon.com slash defense updates. North Korean threat has moved to the next level this year with the regime successfully demonstrating its destructive capabilities in the form of powerful 100 kiloton nukes as well as long-range missiles Hwasong-14 and Hwasong-15. Unlike the US administration's deliberations on the many issues like Syrian chemical weapons attack, President Trump has given his national security advisors far more time and a wider degree of flexibility when it comes to North Korea. Before the policy review began, the Wall Street Journal reported in March that Deputy National Security Advisor KT McFarlane directed aides to include areas that one official described as well outside the mainstream. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why taking out Kim Jong-un is not a good option. Let's get started. Number 5 We now know just how unconventional some of these options are. They apparently include everything from reintroducing nuclear weapons to South Korea as a show of force and deterrence to assassinating Kim Jong-un and his top commanders. We have 20 years of diplomacy and sanctions under our belt that has failed to stop the North Korean program, a senior intelligence official involved with the review told NBC News. Reading between the lines and it's obvious what the overall message from the Trump administration is. North Korea is a problem that has been on Washington's hot plate for way too long. So it's time to shake up the establishment and look for new alternatives. Number 4 There was a time when assassinating a foreign leader was an integral component of America's national security toolkit. During the Cold War, leaders who were either insufficiently supportive of US policy goals or in bed with the Soviets were targets for removal. Cuba's Fidel Castro, Congo's Patrice Lumumba, and Dominican Republic's Rafael Trujillo, and Guatemala's Jacobo Arbenz were all on the CIA's hit list at one point in time. And Libya's Muammar al Gaddafi was a frequent target due to his sponsorship of international terrorism. Number three. Things changed after the end of the Cold War. Killing foreign political officials, an option that was once always on the table, is now generally discouraged and frowned upon. In fact, it's been US policy since the Gerald Ford presidency to stay far away from anything that would suggest that the United States is a participant involved in some way or complicit in assassination attempt. President Ford's executive order on this is quite clear. No employee of the United States government shall engage in or conspire to engage in political assassination. President Ronald Reagan restated and some would say expanded that restriction in Executive Order 12333 which states that no person employed by or acting on behalf of the United States government shall engage in or conspire to engage in assassination. Number 2 Pursuing a policy that would lead to the assassination of Kim Jong-un and the decapitating of North Korean leadership would therefore be a big reversal from a US policy that has persisted for 41 years. Policies of course can change and presidential directives and executive orders can be modified or rewritten. And there's no statutory prohibition that would prohibit the President of the United States to order a hit on a foreign leader. Although 18 US Code Section 1116 could be used to prosecute a US person who attempts to kill a foreign leader. This statute only applies if the crime is committed in the United States or the leader is targeted in a country other than his own. If President Trump were willing to amend current executive orders on the books, his administration would presumably target Kim Jong-un and not be penalized under the criminal code. Number 1 A question that is important is whether assassinating Kim or the generals in charge of North Korea's nuclear program, ballistic missile program, military or intelligence services would be a good idea. There's a perception that 
if just the top bad guy in the regime is taken out all of the other bad guys in that regime will be scared straight change their behavior and suddenly turn their governments into bastions of human rights and democracy US had experience with this belief before several days prior to major military operations in Iraq Washington lobbed cruise missiles at Saddam and the Iraqi political leadership in the belief that perhaps further war could be avoided whether that hypothesis would have played out is unknown because Saddam survived those attacks it's comfortable to assume that the Ba'athist leadership would surrender to coalition forces the next day but it's just as likely that the war would go on North Korea is an entirely different situation than Iraq was in 2003 Kim Jong-un is solidly in power having killed or marginalized anyone including his uncle and half-brother perceived to be even a minimal threat to his control unlike Iraq whose military was demoralized and degraded by the Persian Gulf War in 1991 and by a sanctions regime over the next decade North Korea is a nuclear weapon state with ballistic missiles that have the capability to level Seoul quickly and target US bases in the region killing Kim and banking on the idea that the regime would change how it does business after seven decades would be a high price to pay if that untested theory proved to be wrong because North Korea is such a black hole in terms of human intelligence the US intelligence community wouldn't be able to confidently assess that the man or woman Kim's sister for instance who replaces Kim wouldn't be just as vicious or unpredictable assassinating a head of state is the definition of an act of war and nobody can accurately guess whether cooler heads in Pyongyang would prevail over those who would be itching to demonstrate strength through retaliation reaction from Beijing would be swift and unyielding and as much as the South Korean and Japanese governments would like North Korea to behave more predictably it's not at all certain that Seoul and Tokyo would believe that assassinating the men at the top would achieve that objective putting Kim six feet underground is only one choice in a set of options that the National Security Council has on the table for President Trump's consideration it may even be an option that's so far outside the mainstream that Trump's national security aides would discourage him from even studying it further. It remains to be seen how things pan out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.